Hello everyone and welcome back to Auto Decode. In this video, we'll be learning all the fundamentals of automotive suspension systems. We will be covering the functions, the components and the overview of all the common types of automotive suspension systems. So let's understand suspensions. The suspension subsystem plays a very crucial role in the overall performance of an automobile. There are numerous types of suspension subsystems. In this video, we'll have a look at the most commonly used and the major types of the suspension subsystems. Before heading to the types and varieties, we will first understand the functions, that is why suspensions are used and the components that make the overall system. To understand why suspensions are needed, we will look at the three main functions of a suspension and we will understand what will happen if automobiles had no suspensions in these three scenarios. So the first one, the first main function is maximizing the traction. This means maximizing the contact of all wheels with the ground. So the suspension system maintains the contact of all wheels with the ground by enabling the wheels to move independently with respect to the body or frame of the vehicle, hence maximizing the control and the power utilization. If suspensions were not there, there would be scenarios wherein one of the wheels would lose contact with the ground, hence losing power if it is a driven wheel or losing control if it is a steer wheel, somewhat like this. The next main function is that it improves steering stability and overall handling of the vehicle. We all know that while steering a car or taking a turn, the vehicle body is pushed outside due to the centrifugal force and hence it tends to topple sideways. This tendency can result in loss of handling and control over the vehicle. The suspension system reduces these unwanted movements and hence enhances handling. If there were no suspensions, you could simply topple off while turning hard and could go rolling away with your vehicle. You might have experienced this during your childhood while you were driving a tricycle without any suspensions. So the third important function is providing passenger comfort that is increasing the ride quality. Thank the suspensions for you all can take a nap or drink water or work on a laptop while in a running vehicle. The suspension system dampens the shocks, that is the ground reactions coming from the road due to the bumps and pits and hence increases the passenger comfort. Without suspensions, you would be going all over your vehicle here and there, up and down, even on the slightest of rough roads. So summarizing all the functions in one sentence, the suspensions keep the vehicle body and frame stable by absorbing the forces imposed because of different road scenarios and vehicle motion. To perform all these tasks, the suspension system must control the dynamics of the vehicle by overcoming four main motions of the frame and body of the vehicle, namely dive, squat, roll and yaw. Now let us understand these four motions with respect to this Cartesian system. The x-axis runs in the direction of motion of the vehicle. The y-axis runs perpendicular to the direction of vehicle motion that is from the driver to the co-driver and the z-axis runs perpendicular to the road plane. Dive occurs due to longitudinal weight transfer towards the front of the vehicle that is motion about y-axis which is experienced during deceleration and braking. Squat is the motion during longitudinal weight transfer towards the rear of the vehicle again about y-axis which occurs during acceleration. Roll is the motion due to lateral weight transfer, which means rotation about x-axis. This occurs during cornering or turning as the vehicle mass gets thrown outside due to the centrifugal force. Yaw is the motion of vehicle about z-axis, which generally occurs if wheels lose traction, that is their grip with the road surface, like during drifting. Now that we are done with understanding why we need suspension systems, let us understand what the suspension system comprises of. So there are three main components of a suspension system the spring, the damper and the linkages or the control arms. The springs support the weight of the vehicle and are used to store the energy and counter the forces that are imposed on the wheel by the road. The total vehicle mass is divided into two parts. The first is the sprung mass, which is the mass supported by the springs. In simple language, the sprung mass is the mass which receives the forces after getting damped by the suspension system. So, the sprung mass includes the body, the frame and everything rigidly attached to the body and the frame of the vehicle as well as the passengers and the load. The second part is the unsprung mass. The unsprung mass is everything that receives direct forces from the road and not after getting damped by the suspension system. So the wheels, the suspension system itself and the brakes which are mounted on the wheels all are the part of unsprung mass. 
the unsprung mass continuously undergoes a lot of movement and hence the mass or the inertia of the unsprung mass should be as least as possible there are multiple different types of springs main main type of the springs are coil springs firstly in which a metal bar is coiled around and opposes the forces actually in the direction of coiling leaf springs and another types of springs in which multiple curved metal plates or leaves are laid over each other and work with the virtue of interleaf friction that is friction between the two plates torsion bars are also used as springs which are mounted longitudinally and fixed from one side they provide the springing action due to the twisting of the bar when the wheel moves up and down now if you had only springs on your vehicle your vehicle would keep moving up and down and keep bouncing because springs store energy and return it even harder due to the spring force that's where the second component that is dampers come into picture so the dampers help dissipating this energy stored by the spring and hence zero down the forces let us have a look at how the dampers work conceptually now the damper has a piston with small orifices in it and a chamber filled with oil in which the piston reciprocates one end is connected to the wheel side and the other to the frame of the vehicle when the piston moves due to the wheel motion the oil is forced to move through the small orifices in the piston to the opposite side this motion of oil through small orifices imposes the restriction and hence dampens the forces sometimes dampers and springs are used as one unit in which the springs are positioned over the dampers these are called as coilovers the third important component of the suspension system are the linkages or the control arms these control arms connect the wheel of the vehicle with the frame and hence permit the relative motion between the wheel and the frame the geometry or sizing of these linkages along with the spring and damper completely control the motion of the wheel the up and down motion of the wheel and hence affect the dynamics of the vehicle there are many parameters that these linkages can set in order to control the dynamics of the vehicle and hence the geometry of these linkages is very crucial for performance of the vehicle these three main components that we just saw are arranged in different configurations to make the overall suspension subsystem so the suspension subsystem is classified broadly into two groups that is independent suspensions and the dependent suspensions in the independent suspensions both wheels are connected independently to the frame of the vehicle and one wheel can move without disturbing the motion of the second wheel and in the case of dependent suspensions the wheels are attached to a rigid axle which is connected with the two springs to the vehicle body so the movement of one wheel has an impact on the movement of other wheel attached to that rigid axle as well so the first type that we will be looking at is the macpherson strut type of suspension so in this type of suspension system there is the strut that is the unit of coil plus damper that is spring plus damper connected to the top of knuckle directly here you can see it clearly to the top of knuckle the strut is mounted and to the bottom of the knuckle there is a control arm mounted which is connected to the frame on other side using two pivots so this type of geometry is basically most common in passenger vehicles why because it is very compact and easy to manufacture then in this type of geometry also one thing you should be noting is that during steering the strut has to rotate about its axis about the steering axis the second type of suspension system that we are looking at is the double wishbone suspension system or it is also called as double a arm suspension system in this system there are two control arms shaped as an a the letter a they are also called as wishbone arms because they are also shaped as the wishbone of a bird so these two control arms are connected to the knuckle here you can see it this is the knuckle so this is the upper control arm and this is the lower control arm both are connected to the knuckle using a ball joint and to the frame of the vehicle using a pivot so these two are the pivot of upper arm con connected to the frame and these two are the pivots of lower arm connected to the frame the strut that is the coil over that is a spring plus damper is connected on either of the two arms upper or lower generally it is connected to the lower arm can also be connected to the upper arm so this type of geometry is also used in passenger vehicles sometimes also used in off road vehicles because this has a greater load carrying capacity than the macpherson strut type of geometry because both rigid arms support the strut here so the third most common type of geometry that we are looking at 
is the leaf spring type of suspensions. So in this type of suspension system, the springs used are leaf springs as we have discussed earlier. So leaf springs basically have very high load carrying capacity as compared to the coil springs. Hence, this type of geometry is most probably used in commercial vehicles, which have to handle a very high amount of load. This is, you can see here, how it actually looks on a commercial vehicle. This is the rigid axle of the commercial vehicle. And this is the leaf, leaf spring connected to it. This type of suspension geometry or suspension system is a dependent type of suspension system. So when one wheel moves, it affects the motion of other wheel as well because both the wheels are connected with a rigid axle and not independent of each other. The double wishbone and the McPherson strut, both are independent type of suspension geometries. And this is the dependent type of suspension geometry. In this type of suspension, there is a separate damper used because it cannot be integrated with the leaf springs. We will be learning about all the details about these three type of suspension systems in the upcoming videos of the suspension playlist. So stay tuned. I hope you like this video and don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the bell icon. And also follow me on Instagram. The name is Auto Decode for more interesting and informative content. Thank you. See you soon and keep learning and keep teaching.